three. So thanks, Toby, for being on. Um, is Alfred going to try to join, do you know? He's Alfred's calling in right now. Oh, right now. Well, there he is, by golly. I am so impressed. Yeah, I had to hold his hand. <laughs> but by social distancing, though, right? Yeah, we were about a mile, two miles apart. That's still enough. Yeah, it's having a hard time connecting to his audio. Hi, Alfred. Alfred, I don't know if you can hear us, but right now we cannot see or hear you. Yeah. Rose is gonna. Rose is gonna coach Alfred. <laughs> Uh, Rose, you're on a phone. Can you use the chat function on the phone? I don't know. I don't know. Um. Just wondering. Alfred, can you hear us? Well, if he can, we won't be able to hear him because his microphone is not enabled. Oh. I can't do it from here. Let me try this. I'll see if I can turn on his, get him to turn on his video. Send him a prompt asking him to do that. This is going to be exciting stuff for people watching this, you know, afterwards. <laughs> going to the Orca site and see the point. Sharon, I have the chat option, but I never did it before. And how do I send a chat to Alfred? Uh, I just wonder... Just Go ahead, Sharon. No, I was just wondering if you can, and maybe Alfred can hear us even if we can't, and we can't see him. Oh, uh, um, and he might he mo might explore whether he can send us a howdy. I'm sending Alfie a chat right now. We'll see if he is able to respond. Okay, I can keep working on that if you want to move us forward, Denise. All righty. Toby, you want to give us an update, please? Toby? Toby, you're muted. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, roads are... Alfred, have a join the meeting. Well, there's Alfred. Yeah. All right, let's see if I can turn on his mic. Can you hear me? Hey, Alfie. Hey, Alfred. Doing? Hey, uh, Alfred. I am here, live and well. Good. How are things Welcome in Dallas? Dallas. Thank so you. Toby was Toby was just going to give us an update, and then we'll get an update from you. Okay. Yeah, just um, Alfred was going to go out and take a look at things today and see where we're at. And he and I talked about what the next steps are to get the crew in to uh, deal with any issues that we have on the road. I sent you all an update on um, what the state uh, is telling us about municipal highway crews, and I emailed that to everybody. Yes, thank you for that. Um, and I'll let, I'll let Alfred tell you what he discovered and what your next steps are. Take it away, Alfred. Uh, yeah, so I just took a large run around town, and uh, from what I see, it's mainly just potholes, and there's a few clay boils, but, uh, you know, nothing that people can't get over. Um, and with the rain the way it is, I don't, we can't really do much for grading and whatnot. Um, but... Also, you know, once we once it does dry out, I think we can keep our distance. You got a guy in the grader and a guy who keep his own truck, you know, and we'll just have to in the shop is gonna be the most tricky part for keeping the social distance thing. Um, but certainly the work that is needed out on the road, we can just be in individual equipment and you know, keep cleansing it as I mean that's the best that we can do. Is your is your is your fourteen day quarantine over? Uh, it, it, it not until Wednesday. So Wednesday, Wednesday okay. this week will be the fourteen days. Yeah. Okay, John. 
So, but I can, but I can, you know, I can go in and kind of steer the guys in the right direction. Uh, in the meantime, Alfred, or you know, if it's, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, so. The uh, Epony Kaplan reached out to me before the weekend saying that Beacon of Brook Road was really bad. And then she just emailed me, said it was almost, she was almost unable to traverse it. She actually turned around and went up Lightning Ridge and back down George. So the, uh, I'm assuming the stretch between where George comes onto it and uh, Route 14 must be really bad. Okay. That's one road I didn't pass tonight. Um, but I can, I mean, we can certainly go take a look at it tomorrow. But if it's, like I'm saying, if it's wet and rainy, um, you know, it's going to take a pile of gravel to get it, to get, you know, I mean, to get it fixed. But I certainly can go look at it and make a plan. That would be great. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Rose? Uh, um, I, I had a couple of comments that I wanted to make. Um, I read what Toby had sent, and then I further went on the um, State of Vermont website and, you know, read the whole thing in its entirety. Um, and I, um, I like what Alfred said about checking um, the status of our roads and whatnot. And um, one of the sentences right before the part that Toby highlighted said that construction necessary to support the COVID response and maintain critical infrastructure. And I view our roads as critical infrastructure. And I, yeah, I'm not in favor of the crew um, taking long extended time off, um, going like verbatim what the governor said, you, you have to stay home, stay safe till May 15th. Um, I feel that if we did um, encourage or allow sure. um, or support the crew to stay out till May 15th, we would totally lose our critical infrastructure. And as everybody knows, the amount of money that we budget and fund every year for our highway department um, is such a huge um, amount, and, and rightfully so. So um, I think here in Palace, we, su we support the roads. We put a lot of money into it. We support our crew with good equipment and whatnot. And I, um, you know, I'm in favor of like of waiting till this rain is over. But um, I know Bickford's quarry is open. I did speak to someone uh, um, on the highway department that I know. And he said that everybody has their own piece of equipment. They're sanitizing, they have a bleach water solution. Um, and the social distancing, when they're in the shop, they wear a face covering. Um, and they, they continue to work five days a week. Um, Worcester, I guess, is hit or miss. Um, they come in for some days and they stay other days, but um, so that's my thought. I'm really concerned. Um, I was off today, so I was home. I didn't go out. But um, Greg reported to me that Adamant Village is pretty muddy, or Adamant Road. And so um, I, I really would like to see the guys um, doing what they can to keep our critical infrastructure. Thanks, Rose. Okay. Well, well, I certainly agree with that. Um, it, 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 you know, I was ready to come back to work the day I landed in Vermont, but um, due to the governor's order, we were told not to. So, um, but I'm ready to go now. I mean, after Wednesday, I'm fully in, and my guys, I'm sure, are ready to do the same. Um, this is what we do every year. It's not, it's not our idea to not be working on the roads. Um, so you tell me to go fix them, I'll go fix them. But I, I have to do it. Also, have to do it wisely with the rain. I mean, if you know the rain and hauling hauling gravel on the roads when they're soaking wet like that, we all know what that does. So 
it's a, it is a sort of a judgment call, and I'm sure other towns are doing it, but they're also using judgment the same as I will have to. That's, I think, the, that's the, the thing. The, 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 I don't see where the discretion is in the language that Toby sent us. Necessary repairs only be doing repairs as necessary. Hot holes failing culverts allowed. Normal springtime maintenance, etc., not allowed. So it's parsing where is our discretion under the order, right? Is that what we're trying to do? I think we're trying to decide how much further we want to take the road crew not coming in on a regular daily basis. I think some of that is what we're trying to going to try to determine here. Um, given the governor's additional order, it does say, and I I see what Rose said, deemed critical and may continue in person. Um, friction necessary, I mean, local infrastructure. So I, I think it is a judgment call as to what is critical. Probably some of the, some of the grant projects can be deemed critical. John, you had wanted to say something. Can't hear you. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, the red language sentence, and then the second one says pairs such as potholes, failing car are allowed under the current executive order. Did anybody get that? John's reading the, the red language right now. I'm going to log out and log back in. we a bad connection. Good idea. So I think I think that Alfred will use judgment and um, the one, I think that the road crew at one time was concerned about spending time in the garage together and using one person using the truck and then somebody else using the same truck. Is there a way to avoid that? Yes, there, you know, there's enough trucks. So one guy in each truck, one guy in the grader, you know, that we can definitely keep each guy in his own, in his own space while we're working on the roads. Um, you know, in normal situations, we do trade trucks and one guy will be in it one day and another guy the next day, whatnot, but these are not normal situations. So we're going to have to stick to the truck that we're in. Um, and also cleansing. We'll also have to do more cleansing. Like if, like if one guy is in a grayer that isn't ordinarily, then we'll have to wash it before the next guy gets into it and whatnot. It's just it's going to be a little more time involved and, and work. But I mean that's that's the that's what we got. That's what we got to have to do. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Alfred, so Alfred, Alfred or Toby, what are you hearing from the crew? Anything? Um, I have not. I, I have not spoken with the guys, but um, one of the things we have to do is we have to institute policies to make sure they're safe and they're also um, feel that they're safe. So uh, we probably need to sit down with them and talk with them about all the things that we would have to provide them. I've provided them with gloves. I've provided them with disinfectant sprays. Um, I have not provided them with individual masks. That's something we would probably have to do. Um, they've taken some of that on themselves, but I think it's it's incumbent on us as the employer to make sure they have all the equipment they need, the PPE for if we're going to make them come back, or not make them, but ask them to come back in under these conditions. Okay, Alfred, have you talked to them? Oh, sure. uh, I haven't. I, I, I sort of wanted to wait until after this meeting and yeah. then I would call, call them tonight and just kind of explain to them what what we decide or what we talked about during the meeting uh, and kind of get a sense of what their thoughts are after that. Um, I mean, my guess is that they're chomping at the bit and they want to come and do their job. Um, I know I do, but um, you know, I'm sure that they'll 
they'll do everything in their power to keep themselves and others safe um, while we're doing it. Okay, Sharon, you wanted to say something? John is back. Go to him and then come to me, Denise. Um, there's nothing much more I wanted to say other than the, the bolded language that Toby provided us. The sentence after the bolded red language uh, talks about repairing potholes is is allowed under uh, executive order. So um, I think that means very long wheel track type potholes as well. I and mean, we got to maintain our infrastructure, as Rose says. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, you know, and again, part of the reason uh, the roads are in the shape they are is the weather. We haven't had a period of time when we could actually go out and do repairs. Um, but there's right. starting tomorrow for four days of clear weather where we can get out and actually patch and repair and do a little bit of grading to in, improve all of those conditions. But the cycle of, uh, you know, one day of rain, one day of clear, and the next day of snow, the next day of clear has not given us the opportunity to actually do anything on the roads. And I've been on roads in East Montpelier, and they're in the same shape we're in because there's just the weather. It's, not, it's really a weather issue more than a manpower issue. Karen? Uh, I think that given the given the current environment and some of the other things that we're all working on, we should thread this needle really carefully around the governor's order. I would not want to see us um, interpreting. I would not want to. I would not be inter want us to be interpreting the order expansively in a way that makes things potentially or um, might create the perception that the guys are not safe. So, so I would ask that, I'd like to hear from Alfred that he's read the order and Alfred that you're, that you're comfortable, you understand it and that the things that you're proposing to do can be done within the context of the order. Yeah. It, it, right. Well, the, the order. Well, I haven't read it. Go ahead. I haven't Alfred. read it word. Okay, I haven't read it word for word, but the, the bottom line is we got to keep our distance and we got to keep things clean. Um, and if if guys are in their own vehicle or in their in their separate vehicle and we're not switching vehicles, mm -hmm. that's going to give our give us the distance that we need. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, we, we certainly cannot fix every pothole that's out there. We just can't. I mean, I wish I could, but we can't, uh, given mainly because of the weather. Now, if we get some really decent weather and, you know, we can go fix that, then I'm all into it. But, you know, we've still got clay boils. We've still got um, muddy spots. So I think it's I think it's that's where the judgment comes in. We're going to have to use our judgment to as to which spots are more crucial, crucial, and you know, by keeping our safe distance. And you know, certainly we can keep our distance if we're out working on the road. It's the in the inside the shop is where it's going to be more challenging. Right. Because every every half inch wrench that we grab or every screwdriver that we grab, we're going to have to clean it so that before it goes back on the bench. So. That's where it's going to become more difficult. But and as far as working on, out on the roads, I think we can we can do that. And also dealing with the public. I mean, somebody comes up to our truck, we're going to have to, you know, force the six foot rule. I mean, that's some people are not are not okay with that. Some people, you know what I mean. I've had people that don't agree with that already, but we're going to have to be strong and tell them no. We got to keep the six feet. And also, I would be concerned about making sure you're not all, you know, the break room is nice, but I wouldn't encourage, like, everybody eating lunch together in the break room. You're going to have to be really sure that the bathroom is cleaned on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, most of the time we'll be out on the road, you know, yeah. so we'll be eating our lunch in the truck beside the road somewhere or, you know, or outside the truck. Um, but yeah, I think that you're right. Being in the closed corners is, is going to be the hardest part for us. I think the governor's, order order was pretty, the governor's order was pretty, I thought was pretty clear about um, potholes, culverts, all that stuff are allowed. 
but other springtime maintenance, we don't do street sweeping, but right. things like ditching and stuff, he says specifically are not allowed. And road crews should only be doing repairs to roadway infrastructure that's necessary to ensure imminent safety. To me, right. that frames what's allowed, Alfred. It's less about distancing and you can do it. it. It's not, to me, I think we've moved past, you can do anything as long as you're distancing. And how I read this is it starts with distancing, of course, but only to do necessary repairs such as potholes and culverts. And I don't think that you can do the other things, even if you're distancing, ditching, for example. So, or, so that's what I mean by the really conservative view. I don't think we, we want, I, I feel strongly and right now, we don't want to be accused of, of stretching this interpretation or of interpreting this too broadly. Right. Well, okay. first of all, first of all, we are not going to have time to do any ditching or any kind of, you know, unless it's an emergency culvert, that's not, we're not even going to be able to think about that. We've got so much grading and, and gravel to haul that, you know, we're going to be able to keep, you know, doing the necessary things for two or three weeks. And by then this may be, he may have already, you know, dissolved the order. So as far as the non-necessary, the ditching, the, the, those corner stuff, we won't be doing that anyway. There's just not enough time. Okay. We've got we've got we've got two or three weeks of just grading and hauling gravel. I mean, it happens yeah. every year. This mm -hmm. stuff happens every year. Mm -hmm. Well, and that and and things like things like that sound like they're within the governor's order, and also that they they do social distancing all on their own. We have authorized the. The memo says through April 15th, we need to decide if we're going to extend that, if we extend it for how long, and what way we would interpret the governor's order um, as we've just all discussed. Okay. As we, as we what, Denise? As we've, all, we've been discussing about what the governor's order means and what's allowed and what's not. So I think we need to make a decision um, because April 15th will be here in two days. And we need to make a decision if we're oh. going to extend it through like April 30th maybe to give ourselves a couple more weeks. What would the board like to do? Why would we not extend to May 15th, which is where the governor is now? Only because things might be different by by April 30th, and if we extend it to May 15th, then we don't have an opportunity to get back to doing what we're supposed to, what the road crew would be doing. That's all. I'm just trying. To, I'm just trying to buy a little time. So my sense is that there is, again, the infrastructure is semi-critical. It's. I mean, it's not like the road is washed out or the potholes are unpassable. But I would say that you could ask the road crew to continue the situation that you're in, but that we would ask them to come in and improve the conditions on the road. And that would fall under the emergency critical infrastructure to get it roads passable. And so if they get them done in two weeks, there'd be another two weeks where they wouldn't be required to come in because they couldn't do ditching and they couldn't do other um, other maintenance work that's not acceptable under the governor's um, the governor's um, new order. So would we not leave it up to right now? It's up to Alfred and Toby about calling the crew in. I think they've been called in. Would we not just leave it the same way so that? they would be called in as needed. I mean, if you have a day where, like today, where it poured rain all day, what, they're not going to be able to do anything anymore. Anyway. So right. would, why would they come in just to sit around in the garage together? That's my that's where That's where the judgment call comes in. Right. I mean, that's exactly. where when the, weather's, when the weather is good, we come in and we fix what we can. Yeah. And, you know, that's where the judgment comes in. But leave it, leave it somewhat open so that so that one or two of us can make that decision. Yeah. Does well, how does the board feel about that? 
Rose? Um, I, I'm in favor of that. And um, I just want to make sure that, you know, the guys know whether or not they possibly might have to work tomorrow. I, I would feel bad if they had such short notice, like, you know, it's 730 at night and they don't know whether or not they might have to work tomorrow or whether or not they could sleep in, you know, so, um, but, you know, I'm all in favor of extending this directive. Um, I don't, I don't know. I think I would be more inclined to extend it to April 30th instead of May 15th. Um, but if you leave the language the same, it says at which time we will reevaluate the situation and make a determination. Yeah, so, um, we'd be meeting yeah, on the so 27th and could probably reevaluate the situation at that time. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cliff, you wanted to say something? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, actually, yeah, I agree with uh, what Rose just said. I think it's a sensible approach. Um, and the fact that we do have the meeting on the 27th does position us to be able to look at it again. The other thing I would add is, Alfie, when you're speaking with the road crew, or maybe it's you and Toby together, uh, making sure you give them a chance to state any of their concerns. And if there are things that need to be acknowledged that we need to think outside the box to work around so that they feel comfortable performing their job, um, yeah. you definitely want to know about it. Yeah. Yeah. I so, agree. You could, so, Cliff and Rose, you would agree with me on the April 30th extension? Yes, that sounds good. Okay. And Is John, that... John, what's your pleasure? Oh, thumbs up. Sharon? Is that, is that on the assumption that the, the governor may dial back the May 15th? Is that what we're thinking? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've listened to enough things, as I'm sure everybody else has. He did extend to May 15th, but I wonder, you know, if that could, if that changes. We don't want to be in the position of extending to May 15th, and then the governor dials back a little, and we don't have any way to make any changes after we tell them to, to be gone to the 15th. Mm -hmm. I see. So we're, we're worried that they could you know, go on a vacation or something. Well, or else it could be that the the weather is such that by April 30th, there's no potential other than, um, you know, being out in the trucks and doing gravel and grading. I just think by doing it to April 30th, it gives us a little bit of wiggle room. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I, I mean, I yeah. want to keep I want to keep the guys safe. That's the the utmost. The ultimate goal for me is to make sure they're safe, they feel safe, that we're doing our job in following the governor's directive as much as we can. Mm -hmm. That's uh, actually, I would say that we're following the governor's directive. Well, my words would be that we're following the governor's directive because I, I, that's where I'm not seeing, I don't know where we get discretion to say as much as we can. And maybe that's I, from what I heard from Alfred, we're not really looking to expand it. If we can't be doing the springtime maintenance ditching anyway, that's probably a moot issue. But I would want I would want the motion that we that we offer to include that we are working within the governor's directive until April thirtieth. Blah blah. Okay, John. Just for clarification purposes, what Sharon said is exactly the case we are only allowed to operate within the parameters of the directive legally and uh last friday i was on the phone with a deputy secretary of a state agency and we were talking about a particular matter unrelated to town work and uh she said if you see that that in fact these folks are running a construction business in violation of the directive that people are, are to call state police and they've been directed to shut those things down. So it's very clear. There's no, there's no leeway. Whatever is contained in the directive is all you're allowed to do. Nothing more. So, um, so based on Sharon's motion, I would second that. And I think that we could, I could draft an addendum to the memo and send it around to the board to comment and approve. 
Sounds good. I didn't make a motion, but let me let me play around with oh, the like language. Like, no, uh, I said I would want the motion that's offered. Uh, I was. Um, can't we just I guess, motion I, to extend the letter that we just sent out? I mean, it's that letter's clear. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Maybe just a add an addendum to the memo from April 5th, extending it to April 30th to be reevaluated. Does that, does that one say within the, within the constraints of the governor's order? Does it have language like that in it already? Um, I don't have it in front of me. I have, and if it doesn't, can we add that? I wanted to take and add this language that Toby sent us. Yeah, I like that idea. Yeah. Okay. And say that it's our intent that we be operating within the parameters of the governor's order. Right, section 6B. So I can do that and send it around to the board to review and comment. Okay, with that, I'll make the motion that we extend the extend um, the extend the order we've the policy we've put in place for our road crew to April 30th with the understanding that we are operating as strictly as necessary within the parameters of the governor's executive order. And that Alfred is gonna to talk to the guys and be sensitive about where they are in terms of safety and comfort level. Okay, I'll second that. Did you get that, Katie? 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 Yeah. Yep. Okay. You can also use the thumbs up thing too. Yeah, I'm still typing, that's all. Okay, so we're good. All right, all those in favor, we have to take a roll call vote because this is Zoom. Uh, Cliff? Aye. Rose? Aye. John? Aye. Sharon? Aye. And I'm an aye. Okay, anything, Alfred, does that make sense to you and Toby? Uh, yeah, yeah, so I, I might just add a couple of things. Um, you guys need to feel free if you see a spot out there that you feel is emergency or it needs to be addressed. You can call me, you can text me, you can email me, whatever. Um, you know, I, I would rather hear it ASAP than to hear it at a meeting and that I should have fixed it. Um, you know, feel free to call me anytime and let me know because it's a big town. As you all know, it's 80 miles of road plus and I can't see them all. Yeah. So you know, in these emergency situations when we're going to be sort of part-time-ish, uh, feel free to call me. Let me know. <laughs> we will. Um, and also, uh, to answer, I think it was Rose's question about guys being able to plan. We don't get to plan our day for the next day. It's all winter long. If it snows, we have to go. We know that. Um, the guys know that. So, you know, it's hard to call them, you know, at least I'm calling them at night and not at three in the morning and saying, Hey, let's go to work. Right. Um, I, I do get that. I do get that Rose, but we don't, you know what I mean? It's the same situation as it is in the winter time. If it happens to snow right, half well, an inch, we have to go right. regardless. We just, right. just that's what we signed up for. Yeah. I just didn't want them to think that they were under this directive to stay home, stay safe, that, they didn't know that we are going to be taking care of the roads. Um, so, yeah, I totally understand that. Sure. And I totally trust your judgment, Alfred. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. just so you, and just okay. so you know, the guys all told me that, um, you know, when we were talking about this, that they were happy to come back in when they were needed. So they're, they're all of the understanding that they will have come, will have to come back in situations. Oh, good. That's good yeah. to hear. Thanks, Toby. Okay, um, all right. Uh, Pam DeAndre was gonna be on call in, but I don't see, do you see anything from Pam DeAndrea, Cliff? That doesn't come on board yet. Okay, cause um, you know, we had the discussion last meeting and I raised the issue of my concern with the grants and somehow making sure that if we spend a lot of money on a project, and then the federal government says, oh, we re we rethunk. 
you know, some of this grant money and now it's not available and we've already paid out money and then we can't get reimbursed. Um, I think I forwarded to everybody and it might, and it's in the Google folder, the email from Pam about the project in East Callis. That's the one for um, around the Callis post office and Moscow Woods Road. It's that gully thing that we've been talking about for a couple of years. She says that that is all set to go. Um, but I don't know when I was going to ask her when if she got on the phone was when would that project start? Alfred or Toby, do you have any clue as to when that project would, might be started? Uh, well, I think I think they're working on the, the engineering part of it is what they're working on right now. So we won't be good breaking ground this year, certainly. Oh, really? I, I guess I got That's, the impression. Um, well, Toby may be able to correct me, but the last I heard was that it was they were working on an engineering study, right. money for the engineering part. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So from what I understand, this round of grants is for to do the final engineering. They've only done just a just a survey and a preliminary look at it. So they don't have the full engineering. And I believe Pam was saying that we would have to get a grant for the engineering part of it first and then go and apply for a grant to do the work after that. Well, the, one, of, one of the emails from Pam says, we were going to put in some time for Alfie to help with some excavation, perhaps to help the engineers test the soils. There you go. Right. So that, that's still engineering. That's just they can test holes so they can okay. see what soils there are there. So there, there will be a little bit of excavator work, but it's only maybe a day. It's nothing. It's not the, it's not the actual project. Okay. All right, so I just wanted to put that on everybody's radar and make sure that we're, you know, not getting into something that we might not get reimbursed for later. But it sounds like it's it's just going to go forward with what it is for now. It's so, just, so, so in that same uh, discussion of grants, I talked with Shauna about the George Road grant. Um, she said that money's already been set aside and that that's not an issue, so... <coughs> We can go ahead with that project and not worry about there being no money at the end of it. Um, and again, we'd have to wait to start the work until the, the state allows contractors to go back to work. But we can continue. We have not had a site visit or put it out to bid, but we can continue to do that at this point. Okay. Is the board in agreement with that? Mm-hmm. Thumbs up from Cliff, Sharon's shaking, thumbs up from Rose, John. Okay, good. Thank you, Alfred and Toby. Yes, you're welcome. And we're so glad you're back, Alfred. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Welcome back. Yes, well, thank yeah. you. It's nice to be here, I gotta say. Good for you. You you're yeah. you're back home. Yeah, yeah. I I won't say I'm a new man, but I feel like one. Good for you. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thanks, I'll see you out on the road. Yep, You're welcome. Thank you. I'll see see you out. Right. Yeah, you bet. Thank Bye you. Now. You're welcome. Um, Nick's, Nick's here, I see. So we could, Judy, do you have anything you want to update us on from town office perspective? Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Uh, I just thought I'd um, update you that we are... Um, uh, you know, setting up a schedule that's working. Uh, Barbara and I are alternating weeks, and uh, Sandra's coming in on Thursday afternoons, and Jan, as Lister, is coming in on Friday. And I think we've organized it so that everyone feels safe. Um, it, there seems to be agreement that we don't want to be in the office together because it's just very close quarters. Um, so we have a protocol of going in for our shift, cleaning everything up when we leave, and then there's a period of time between each one of us. Um, so that seems to be working. I went in last week and worked part of Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, left early enough so there was time between me and Sandra and got all the recording, all the land recording caught up from the last two months. 
Wow. So I feel really good about that. Um, there's very little that's outstanding, just like a, a few documents that just barely came in. So we're up to date with recordings. Um, we're that monitoring really phone good. calls. So Barbara's going to take over monitoring the phone. So you and Cliff are off the hook. Um, so, uh -huh. she will, <laughs> so she will pick up um, any messages when we're not in the office. And, um, and so far there have not been any emergency requests. Um, it's really been a lot of requests for tax bills and lister cards and yeah. kind of routine things. Um, and Sandra's sending out those copies of tax bills as requested. And we, it's, it's, uh, we're doing our routine April stuff. We're doing dog licenses and overweight permits. And, and um, I think, you know, the critical piece is allowing Jan to get in there so that um, – she can start working on the grand list and all the things that the listers need to do, um, you know, to prepare for, for tax bills. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And I read the governor's latest um, order and they're talking in there about um, some other requirements and stuff. It's actually pretty interesting. And I thought I'd say this, but it's pretty interesting to read the order. There's a lot in there. Um, did the lockbox thing get ordered? The outside? Yeah, the lockbox was ordered. It should be arriving any day. Um, and we also ordered a new door lock system, which arrived and I've had keys made. Um, I'm, I think I'm going to ask Andy to put that in over the weekend. I'm trying to, you know, arrange it so it's in between people. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and as soon as the lockbox comes in, I'll ask him to do that. Perfect. Anything else? Are you guys still feeling supported and all that stuff? I know I do. I don't know if Barbara wants to chime in, but um, I, I think I think we're um, we're doing great, and I think I think you all are doing great in terms of um, navigating this really unusual situation. Hey, it's like a learning experience. Barbara? I, I certainly feel supported by Judy, Sandra, and the select board, um, as well as residents who call in and thank us. And uh, I, I, from time to time, Judy and I both get emails from people thanking us. And so I, I feel great about how we're operating. Oh, and thanks. so nice to hear. Thank you for your efforts. Yep. What a great team we have. I'm proud and pleased to be a part of it. Thank you, Barbara. Um, I just want to chime in. Um, Sandra's not on this call, but um, I think you all are aware that she is um, really keeping up with everything. And on top of the pandemic, she's, you know, taking medication for a reoccurrence of Lyme's disease. Yeah. So, um, but she's very energetic in the mornings and, and says that she really needs to cut back on the afternoon. So we're working around that so that she can get back to health as well. Yeah, and she said that her the internet for her at home is actually working out well because, like you said, morning she has energy, and then sometimes in the evenings or on the weekends she'll do stuff. So, however, whatever works for people to be able to get their work done, I don't think any of us have any problem with that. Right, that's what we're doing. Yep. Okay. Um, Do you want to wait to talk about IT and town hall painting until after we let Nick in? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Hi, Nick. How are you? Hello. Doing well. All's well. And, you know, uh, while in the last few minutes it occurred to me that if the uh, board is going to be having a discussion about whether to uh, entertain the proposal for me to be the emergency management director, I can sign out for a while until you call me back. I don't need to be part of that discussion. No, I, I from my perspective, you have you have experience. You've been the one helping to update our plan. Um, I think it's a great idea. I just meant in terms of the board's deliberation about that. Yeah, actually, Nick, if need be, we can just put you into a waiting room and bring you back in. Then you wouldn't even have to sign out. But okay. I don't I don't anticipate that we'll need to go there. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to discuss a reduction of the salary increment of a hundred thousand, maybe down to eighty thousand a year. 
That could be a deal breaker. So. Oh, my. Can I um, have some of that money? <laughs> sure, Toby. You deserve some of that. So, board members, um, I think this is a great opportunity for Nick to take the lead on this. Um, like I said, he has the experience. He's been the one updating the plan. He's been in on the initial um, setting up of our team and what we're what we're doing. Um, that's my two cents. anybody Anybody else want to chime in? John? Well, well, uh, Denise, as you know, I was excited to hear that Nick stepped up and uh, is interested in even doing this. This is awesome. So I, I'm, I'm very excited about his being appointed. I'd like to get it done before he backs out. Yeah, before he, before he wants to negotiate the salary, right? Cliff, your thoughts? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm totally on board. And uh, I want to say very much thank you, Nick, for stepping forward. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's important with everything that's going on right now that people do uh, step forward. And it's just one of the great things about this community that we all share in love. So thank yeah. you. Rose? Yeah, I concur what... Cliff and John have said, um, we appreciate you, um, Nick, coming forward to doing this. We appreciate everything that you've done, updating the plan. Um, and so um, I'm, I'm fully in support of you being our emergency management director. Thank you. Sharon? Same, what everybody said. Thank you, Nick. Hi, Nick. All righty then. Um, Nick, do you have any requests, anything that you think you need? Um, yeah, well, let's see. The, my first thought is um, that just to acknowledge that in with this COVID crisis, the select board and the town officials really uh, came right in with a strong, proactive response, and I think that was widely acknowledged and appreciated. So uh, that's, that is great, and that is um, part of the response phase of the four phases that emergency management, including which includes recovery uh, after response, mitigation after recovery, and then preparedness in front of them, before the incident. So there's a lot of ways I think we can build out uh, what we're doing, and it all it all is about teamwork. I, it's definitely not a solo act, and so I would be looking. My guess my request is I'd be looking for engagement. From the select board, and uh, and then working as a team, because yeah. it it takes it takes a, a team of people to do this. Wow. Takes a village, right? Yeah. Takes a village. And I um, already have you know a shopping list of things that I'd, I'd love to uh, get to work on. One right near the top is this government emergency telecommunications service or GETS which I think I've mentioned before, but uh, this is in a situation where there's a national emergency, telephone lines, landlines are um, being totally overwhelmed. And this is a free service where we can identify uh, town officials and, and you know, a dozen or so people uh, in Calus who get put to the front of the line by the landline uh, providers so that um, when the phone lines are overwhelmed, those people can get through with emergency, emergency communications. So that so would be one of your just, first things to work on then? Yeah, if the select board uh, feels okay about that, and I'd, I'd like to get a list of names from all of you about who should be on that, um, I could have something I could start with right away. I think that sounds like a great idea. So, um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, and sometime I'd love to sit down with Toby and Denise and anyone else and uh, sort of go over, prioritize some of these ideas and see which ones we could take action on, especially the ones that don't cost any money. I, um, we like the ones that are free. Yeah. All and, right. And, the, and just the last thing is uh, thank you all for your um, voter confidence. Um, Absolutely. I think, we could, I think we can make it fun and um, do a lot for the town this way. If we can make COVID fun, I'm all for it. Hmm. All right, I would make a motion to nominate Nick to be the Director of Emergency Management. I'll second that, John, we'll second that. Okay, we need to do a roll call vote. 
Cliff? Aye. John? Aye. Sharon? Aye. Rose? Aye. And I'm an aye. So Nick, do you want to be put on our agenda regularly? Like our next meeting is the 27th. Do you want to be a regular? Do you want to be a regular? Uh, I don't think I need to be on, on every agenda, no, but um, on an as needed basis, that might be every couple, once every couple of months, something like that, or as the need arises. Okay. But no, I don't need a regular agenda. All right. Great. Thank you. And uh, you have a document that you need, uh, need to approve, because that's the uh, LAMP. Right. Uh, you have some updating to do on that now, though, right? Yes, I guess I'll take, um, based on your vote tonight, I'll, I'll just change the names in those spots. And who has, who signs that? Uh, who, who has to sign off? Select board chair. Okay, is so it the chair or is it the emergency management director? It's the I'm pretty sure it's the select board chair. Okay. So maybe um, you could authorize me to do that and you could send me the form, I could sign it and scan it back to you. Okay. Is Toby going to stay coordinator or is that going to be blank? You asking me to keep serving? Yes. Yeah, I can certainly do that. That would be a big plus because uh, Toby's got a lot of institutional knowledge around this that I don't. Yep. No, it would be good if Toby would be willing to stay on. So let's have one. How much is my salary again? Oh, it's under negotiation, Toby. 50% of Nick's. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I think, I'm at 75. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, that um, as I read the statute that I sent to all of you, um, the director can appoint a coordinator. So I'm, I would be really happy to leave that to Nick's authority. But thank you for answering the question, Toby. Oh, I, I, I mean, I'm very strongly in support if Toby's willing to. Um, stay on as coordinator, that'd be great. And so it shall be if Nick appoints him. All right, so about the signing of the documents. Uh, I'll, get, I'll get those to you, Denise. They okay. can advise staff. All right, would anybody like to make a motion to authorize me to sign those? No. So what? So moved. Okay, is there a second? Second. All right, all those in favor, please say aye. Cliff? Aye. John? Aye. Um, Sharon? Aye. Rose? Aye. All righty, thank you. You're welcome to stay on, Nick, or you can depart. It's up to you. Okay, um, I'll depart. And one last thing is that uh, if you we still have a couple of weeks before we are required to turn in the document to the planning commission. Uh, if you, you look at it and see anything, you see any bogus phone numbers or any information that should be added or subtracted, uh, please let me know. And I'll, I'll try to keep a single version of this thing so we don't get scattered versions. Just, just let me know and I'll change right. it. And when it gives, and when we're, and when we sign off and it's sent to CVRPC, we'll need to put a copy on the website. The town's website. John? Uh, Nick, do you have uh, contact phone numbers, home and cell? I can put in my iPhone as we're talking. For you? For Nick. For Nick. What, what are your phone numbers? Oh, mine. Okay, sorry. Um, home is 229-4919. Cell is 505-1024. Ten twenty four. Okay. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. All right. I'm signing out as well as EOC. All right. Thank you, Toby. We really appreciate everything. Thanks, Toby. Thank, Thank you, you, Toby. Bye, Toby. <clears throat> Alfred, are you staying on? Are you still there? Oh, Alfred's no. Oh, Alfred. Alfred. No, no. I thought Alfred left a long time ago. <laughs> I wouldn't blame him if he did, but Alfred, I think he said he was leaving. 
Maybe he's just ma you know keeping abreast while he's eating his supper. Oh, because it still says Alfred's iPhone. Yeah, he's probably got his phone running and watching him following the meeting while he's eating his supper. How exciting. Supper time entertainment. That's what I would be doing. Yeah, right. <laughs> sure you would. Or it's in his pocket and he doesn't realize it's still connected to the meeting. I mean, it could be. Um, all right, we should talk about the RFP for the town hall. Um, you remember at town meeting the voters approved a higher budget than we requested because the one of the estimates that came in was like 50,000. I think the voters ended up approving a $50,000 um, budget, but regardless, regardless of what the amount is, it needs to go out to bid on an RFP. Mm -hmm. um, given the, once again, given the situation with the COVID-19 stuff, um, you know, there may be a really hard time for people to be paying their taxes. And there was something that just, I think I forwarded to everybody just before the meeting that I found on a VLCT post about taxes. So we don't have to decide tonight about putting out the RFP, but we should really think about it. I know that the town we agreed that it was really a priority because it's a newly done building and we don't want the de outside to deteriorate and then cost more money. So just wanted to put that out there. Comments, thoughts? Denise, could, I'm being dense. What are you actually putting out there that we hold off on an RFP or that we consider not doing it? Yeah, I'm just putting it out there. What, what does the board think? The, according to the thing I sent everybody from VLCT, it sounds like, and maybe it needs further, it probably needs further investigation, but it sounds like, remember we decided to hold off on the chipper? Um, yeah. We asked Jim about doing that. And it sounds like now, what it sounds like from VLCT is, is that we do have that authority with like the chipper, the town hall RFP, because, um, you know, people's tax bills, a lot of people are going to be hurting. So I, just I would like us to think I, about it. We don't have to decide tonight. Yeah, I'd like to read what you sent and, and consider it clearly in, in light of what you're specifically proposing. I get it. Yeah. Cliff? Yeah, it's kind of a interesting position. Um, a lot of these guys aren't able to work right now, um, so they're going to be looking for jobs they can jump on top of once the the um, gates open again. And you know, uh, we could shop an RFP without committing to a start date, citing the circumstances that currently are going on. Uh, we certainly would not be ready to enter into a contract until we have a better picture of the tax situation and the overall financial burden that we're looking at. Um, but at the same time, it, it might be good, and I'm not saying we should have to do it right now, but while we're considering this, we've got to be thinking about what's going on in the market that we might be able to get um, some very competitive offers. That's true. That's a very good point. Rose, we can... Rose did you have a thought? Oh, Sharon, go ahead. You were in the middle of your sentence. No, I wasn't. I wasn't there yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, I um, I understand. Um, yes, we need thoughtful consideration about this. Um, but I I do agree with what Cliff said that we might um, we might find some people that would be willing to sharpen their pencils. So I think um, just by putting the RFP out doesn't necessarily obligate us to a certain start time um and you know i looked on my bank account and my stimulus money is due to get posted on wednesday so um i'm definitely going to put that money towards my property taxes so you know everybody's getting 1200 bucks um if people are on unemployment they're getting the regular unemployment plus 600 dollars a week um so I know someone who's on unemployment and they're bringing home $888 a week. 
Um, and so I think that people will have the resources and, you know, um, it needs to get done. It's part of like before we open up and, you know, start posting venues there and whatnot. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm just in favor of, I guess, putting out the RFP at least. Okay. John? Yeah, I agree with what Cliff and Rose have said. Put the RFP out and it will take it. Not okay. a big. Yeah, and I think the RFP, I'm fine with that. I just want us to be thoughtful, mm -hmm. um, which I know we will be, about spending the money. Mm -hmm. um, we have a draft RFP. Um, Judy? Sorry, I'm getting um, kicked out of my bedroom. <laughs> Um, there's, a, there's a draft RFP um, for the painting of the town hall. Is that something that Barbara would send out or could send out? Um, sure. We, I mean, we once we have a list of invited people or or places where you want to advertise it, um, okay. we can we can manage that. Yep. Oh, don't you mean to us, Denise? Say what? Did you mean to us? What? I don't. I, I'm sorry. I didn't follow you. Barbara, send the RFP out to to us, or did you mean to disperse it broadly? Oh, I meant to disperse it. There's oh, a copy can... of the RFP in the folders for today's meeting. Yeah, there is. And um, I can certainly uh, work with Barbara because uh, when. When uh, Donna sent out the RFP for everyone to consider and discuss, she also included a list of people we would potentially want to invite to bid on it, a list of companies, I should say. And um, yeah, I can, you know, I can certainly help identify where we might want to advertise it, and whatnot. Now, do we have to? Do we have to, or should we advertise it on the VLCT? Um, don't they have some kind of a list? To advertise RFPs, we I did believe, that for uh, yeah. the uh, IT RFP, I believe. Yeah. Okay. And do we are we required to also advertise it in the local newspapers? I don't know if we're required. Judy, maybe you could respond to that question. I think we have typically in the past. Whether it's a requirement or not, I don't know. But um, I I thought the requirements were more like you need to have at least. Three or four bids, or I, I can't. I can't remember. I have to look at the specifics, but that's the what we've done today. I think we require. I think we're required to have three. Required to to solicit at least three bids. We might not receive three bids, but we are required to solicit them. And right. Now we, right. Because when we did the RFP, when we were looking to maybe transfer IT support, we sent it out to several places and then we got what was it five responses or something we got we sent it out to seven different uh places we got six responses yeah. um we did list it in the paper on the website as well as the um the lct uh avenue okay so does the board want to go ahead with sending out the rfp or do you want time to think about it what, what's your pleasure I'm in favor of sending it. Okay. John? Yes. Rose? I mean, uh, Sharon? Um, I'm sorry, guys. I was in the wrong meeting folder all day. I was in 314 instead of 413. Um, so I didn't see it. Does it? Does the RFP um, leave us the flexibility to not contract? Right, to not to not go forward even if we get bids, you mean, right? Right. Yeah. Yes. Do we have yes, you guys are confident in that? If that's the I, case, then I, I would I would want to review it and make sure the language is there. And if it's not, we we make sure it's spelled out very explicitly. Um, like I say, we can certainly cite current circumstances. Yeah. And you know, say we don't have a start date for this project. But yeah, we, we can, are interested we in wanting to know who'd be interested in doing the work once we can move forward. 
Right, and then obviously it wouldn't be until after the governor's um, stay home, stay safe order is lifted, which may or may not be May 15th. Is it something that you feel like we should run by, um, Jim? No, I just feel like we should, I would want the language to be clear that we don't know when, when or whether we will move forward. I would want us to have the ability to actually not even move forward at all. Cliff, do you think you could draft something up and send it around to us and give us a, a Yeah, time? that's that's what I would propose is I can take a look at it and um, also review it uh, again with the, the town hall committee and say, you know, this is what we're going to add in. Is there anything else you want to add to it? And then we can make a final decision on it at our next meeting. Okay. Sounds like a good plan. I need to interject something here. I'm getting a... Um, text message from Verizon, or is it Verizon? No, it's from uh, Xfinity, which is the cable provider that gives me my internet. It says there's a good chance I'm gonna experience uh, service interruption here anytime. So All right. I end up getting locked out of the meeting. I would like to uh, be ready for that eventuality by assigning someone a co-host duty. Uh, who would be comfortable taking on that assignment? I can okay. do it, Sharon, John. Sharon? Judy, Judy knows how to do it, right? John, it looks like you're pointing to Rose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in town. I have good internet here. Okay, Judy I got, I'm going to turn you on as, as co-host, Sharon. That was Sharon, according to my screen. That's Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> according to my screen, it's up. This is Rose. Well, hopefully, okay, let's see if we can hurry up then. IT update, Cliff. Uh, give me a sec to get Sharon uh, enabled. If, if there's something else we go to real quick and then come back to IT. Um, I don't think there's not anything much else that I have to report on. Um, I think we're in good shape. Everybody seems to be holding their own. Um, I just said it's an awesome team effort. We're looking at COVID-19 numbers. 560,256 in the U.S. as of this moment. And wasn't there like 7,000 deaths in New York City? Yeah, I think it's upwards of that. 22,101 oh, it, nationwide. It's horrible. It's just unbelievable. Mm. What I do want to do is um, one of the things that Cliff's going to talk about is we... We may be eligible for this um, a refund of some expenses. Um, Cliff's going to talk about um, some security stuff at the town hall for the Wi-Fi. We've got the lockbox. Um, we may be, I think you have to have $3,300 or more worth of expenses. So okay, we're gonna uh, Sharon, you've been... I've given you the co-host thing, so you should have some different controls on your screen when your menu bar pops up. Okay. <laughs> oh, pause, pause, stop recording. Exactly. Security. Okay. You, you have the ability to mute everybody or kick people out, or if someone comes into the waiting room, you can admit them. Okay. Sounds Got like it. a doctor's office. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> I'll try to back up and start from the beginning with IT. Um, there are some projects that we're currently working on that would qualify for this reimbursement funding that Denise mentioned. Uh, we also could look at, we had talked about um, last time around turning on this uh, public Wi-Fi hotspot at the town all that happened. We did not have to spend any money to make that happen. The existing system, uh, we turned it on and it worked. Um, we still have the option to upgrade uh, the, the connector device that manages all of that for us, the firewall. Uh, so we can look at that and mm -hmm. if we decide it makes sense, this is another expense that we could possibly get reimbursed for. The other things related to IT to be aware of, this is branching into a separate subject now, I'm not talking about the reimbursement, but we have signed the contract for uh, 
moving forward with the work on the server. And I believe um, cutting the check is amongst the items that uh, has to be approved. It should be in the stack that uh, Denise has. Um, one of the things that came up in the discussion with RB Tech, while we're talking about the server, is recently we had done the upgrade to our backup system. And what we have discovered is that the internet connection at the town office is not as robust as we would like it to be. I'm sure everybody's aware of that. It does limit the ability of this system to give us a complete backup. It's working most of the time, but not all of the time. We need to consider having a alternate backup solution. And the most practical one is to set up what they call a, a slingshot connection. This will basically consist of a couple of antennas and some hardware uh, between the town office and the town hall so that backup information can be relayed over to a backup device that lives at the town hall and gives us another layer of security and backup on all of our systems. Uh, so I asked RB Tech to provide us with a quote for that. They have provided us with a quote. There is a copy in the folders for today's meeting. Uh, it's about $2,200 to get this system in and turned on. And um, we would also tap into Andy Felice to do some of the legwork, um, getting the mounting plates on and uh, the wiring in place at uh, RB Tech's instructions so that we can save some money there. But even going that route, it looks like we're roughly looking at about $2,200 expense. Don't put that on everybody's radar. Cliff, I have a question. I have a question. Hey, John? Go ahead, John. Uh-oh, is he froze? Neither guy is doing a really good statue. So I'll ask my question. So it looks like John is frozen. Um, does this also give us the ability to have security when we're when people are accessing the Wi-Fi from like the, the town hall parking lot that we talked about? This would be a completely independent system from the public Wi-Fi hotspot that we have turned on at the town hall. It would rely upon the a firewall system that's in place at the town office and would maintain the same level of security that we have at the town office. So there would be better security than at the town office. I mean town hall. It would be it would be an extension of the security that's in place at the town office and have nothing to do with hi fam. Have nothing to do with uh, the public Wi-Fi hotspot. What it would do, though, is it would move us closer to uh, the goal that John, that John's logged out, is going to try and come back in. Um, oh, this goal that John has of being able to give us Hello. Yep. yep. Being able to give us the full, you know, have somebody working at the town hall as if they were in the office. It's so, one step towards that as well. Okay. All right. Thanks. Bye. So that was John just calling that something happened with his internet connection. He's going to try to reboot and rejoin, but no guarantee. Okay. So the, so the question, are you asking us to approve this 22, roughly $100? I want to put it on everyone's radar, um, encourage everyone to take a look at the quote and come back with questions at our next meeting, and I would like to put it up for a vote at that meeting. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Hi, Pam. Anything else, Cliff, on um, IT? Uh, the only other thing I could add is that um, some of the other committees have started contacting me to schedule meetings through Zoom. And we were able to do it uh, as a no host meeting so that they can have their meeting and I don't have to be sitting in there or nobody right. has to be sitting in there acting as host. Yeah, I'm sure that some of them are really needing to have a meeting. So how do we put the word out that and how does that get scheduled so everybody's not trying to use it on the same 
night and time? Well, they could actually use it the same amount of time. Uh, we would schedule separate meetings. That would not be an issue. Uh, the way it's working right now is people are contacting Barbara, uh, and um, she either sends them directly to me or asks me to get in touch with them. Usually, she sends them directly to me and says, you know, get in touch with Cliff, and he can set you up with the meeting. Uh, Judy, you, has there been any issues around handling it that way? No, that sounds fine. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if it's if it's up and running, we should make it available so that they. I know the Conservation Commission has been wanting to meet, um, so they would still need to do an agenda, and it would be posted, and all the same routine, except for it would be by Zoom. Right, and the way the the temporary rules are operating is it's really only uh, select board school board meetings that re have the record required. They have to be you, you cut out. They have to be recorded. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, all righty then. Let's see. PM. We already talked about. Um, we had that. We had that on around seven thirty. Yeah, I apologize. I was busy with kids. Sorry about that. That's okay. Does anybody have any questions about it now that I'm here? No, we, we basically said that this is mainly this first phase is for mostly engineering studies. And mm -hmm. so we're we're just we're good to proceed. Okay, great. All right. Well feel free to reach out with me to me if you have any other questions and I'll let you know as soon as we have a contract and when we can start. All right. Yeah, but we haven't solicited for um, an engineer yet either. So once I have a contract, I'll do that and reach out to you to see if you want to review the proposals with me. But okay. how are you holding up with two kids at home? We're doing fine. Good. Good. <laughs> We're doing just fine. Thank you. Everybody else okay? Yeah. Everybody's yeah. Everybody's just plugging along. That's all we can do, right? Okay. Well, sorry I missed the agenda. No, well, I good didn't good realize what. What time I was on, so I apologize for that. No worries. Good to see okay. you. Okay. All right. Good to see you. Thanks, Sam. Take care. All right. Are you ready to stop zooming? All right. Let's make a. John just came up from that time today. Oh. Give him a minute for his audio to connect. Hi, John. Do <clears throat> we're, we're ready we're ready to stop zooming we're about ready to adjourn are you have anything else um no i just want to make sure our roads get just in circling back in summary of our, our meeting the most important thing for me is to make sure these roads this time of gook are yeah. ma maintained to a, 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 a minimum standard so that we can get fire trucks ambulances and people absolutely through. I need to get to the hospital. Well, one nice thing, well, I guess the buses are still running to deliver meals, but they're not running as much and as that, And I think that helps a lot. I think stay safe, stay home. People aren't out on the roads as much. Other, you know, some people obviously have to go to work, so we have to make them safe and passable, like, you know, for Rose and Sharon, for instance, that go into town all the time to work. We, um, have, we have a considerable elder senior citizen population um, and I think it, we need to be cognizant of that. Yeah. Okay. But I do, I would support if anybody has anything to contact Alfred right away. Right. He, he seems rare, raring and revving to go. So let's keep him, keep him going. Yep. Okay. Does somebody like to make a motion to adjourn? Oh, Sharon? Uh, before I make a motion, you guys know how I enjoy absurd things that are on the internet. I encourage you to all watch the Saturday Night Live from home. That was Saturday night, and they did a whole skit on Zoom meetings, and it is oh, absolutely that. Great. hilarious. Great. That sounds great. Oh, I make a motion that, oh. One, one last thing. If Katie could, like, at least a smile now, she's making me tired just looking at her. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Does your face hurt, Katie? Yeah, I'm like, why are we still smiling? <laughs> Katie always smiles. Well, well. I, I make Katie, the motion that we adjourn. 
Okay. Um, one last thing, Katie, when you get the wording for the part we talked about with the uh, road crew, if you could send that to me so I can sure. draft an addendum to our memo and send it around to the board, that would be great. Sure. What was the name of the project that, that was noted with Sh the Shauna project? The Shauna project was George Road. George Road. Thank you. Yes. All right. So a motion has been made to adjourn. I didn't hear if there was a second. Five seconds. Okay. Roll call, Cliff. Aye. Rose? Aye. John? Aye. Karen? Aye. And I'm an aye. Aye, aye, Captain. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, Thanks. everyone. Bye, everybody. Smiling, when's, our, when's our next meeting? 27. Regular meeting. Regular meeting. Okay. Very good. Okay, wait, wait, wait. before everyone leaves, everyone try to match Katie's smile. Ready? Stop um, it! <laughs> <laughs> oh Do God. the empathy in the teeth. <laughs> Good night, all. Good night, Good night everybody.